Hello everyone. Welcome to another video on how to use uh, the graphical representations and statistical analysis of Minitab. In this video, we are going to see about Pareto chart. Pareto chart, many of you will be familiar about Pareto chart as a concept. Those who are not familiar about uh, what is Pareto chart, we have a separate video on the detailed theory and how Pareto chart as a tool evolved uh, and what is the logic and concept behind it, the 80-20 rule concept. I have given the link of that video in the description of this video, so you can uh, understand about the concept of Pareto chart in that specific video. We have made a series of videos on seven QC tools. In this video, we will uh, specifically explain how to draw this Pareto chart using Minitab. So there are the different ways of drawing Pareto chart in Minitab, so we will see them one by one. So we are going to basically get this uh, segregated into three methods. So in Minitab, you can draw Pareto chart in three different ways. So we'll understand each of that one by one. First, let's understand about how to draw Pareto chart when you have a data which is uh, not summarized. So when I mean not summarized, what is the meaning? So for example, here, let's understand. These are the issues for which customers have called and raised a ticket with a tech support team. So let's say I manage a tech support team, customer call and say they have a problem with their computer. And that problem can be operating system related issue. It could be a you know, mic not working, keyboard not working, battery life of a laptop is not uh, you know as per the requirement. So it can be any of the issues. So generally the issues are noted down one after the other. And I have only this data available, right? So what I'm going to do, generally we call this kind of data as categorical nominal data. So it is one of the discrete type of data, categorical nominal. Why categorical nominal? Customer can call for any of their issue and those issues can be more than two. They do not follow any sequence or order, so it cannot be ordinal. So this is categorical nominal data. So I'm copying this data and I'm pasting it in C1. So now what I need to do, I can click on stats. I can click on quality tools and in quality tools, I can select Pareto chart. Once I select Pareto chart here, the tech support issue, the ticket for which the tech, uh, tech support ticket is being raised, the issue type, so that becomes my attribute data. So this is my attribute data. The other name for discrete data is attribute data. So this becomes my attribute data. And then what I do, I can either say combine after 95 or I can say do not combine. To start with, I'm going to have do not combine and I can, I'll tell you uh, why I selected do not combine and I can go to options and in X axis, I can say type of issues and in Y axis, I can say count, right? And here I can have a cumulative percentage or you can opt not to have a cumulative percentage, but generally Pareto chart we draw with cumulative percentage. So I decided uh, to keep this unchecked and I can give a title for my chart. So I will say Pareto for tech issues and I say okay and I say okay. So what happens? I get a Pareto chart. So this Pareto chart will tell me Operating system is the top contributor with 29.3%. Keyboard not working is the second top with 19.5. And together, the first two items contribute to 48.8. And as you see, this is the Pareto chart for uh, tech issues. What we have done, we have taken the data as such. It is not summarized. So just to explain you how the combine option works, here I have mentioned do not combine. So here I'm going to say combine everything beyond 90. So that means what the last two items, if I say combine everything beyond 80, then last three items. So just to show you, I will say combine everything beyond 80. So what will happen? So I say, okay. So the last three items will get combined. So that is how we will draw the Pareto chart. So this is the first type of Pareto chart where the data is not summarized. Now we will see how we will draw a Pareto chart if the data is already summarized. For example, here I have the defects process, uh, uh, identified in invoices processed by a team for last one month. So the total number of defects identified. And what is the reason for defect? Uh, currency incorrectly mentioned, wrong GL code entered, 
So there are many reasons, but this data is summarized. For each of this defect type, I know what is the number of items observed or number of times this particular defect type was observed. So this is summarized data. So I copy this data. I take this to Minitab. So in Minitab, if you want to look at charts alone, you can click here. So it will bring the charts one by one. If you want to go back to your session window, you can click on this. It will take you back to your session window. So here I'm going to paste this summarized data. Now again, I'm going to click on stacks. I'm going to click on quality tools. And in quality tools, I'm going to select Pareto chart. This time, the reason for rework will be selected as my attribute data. And now because I have summarized the data, I'm going to enter quantity of rework. And again, I can opt not to combine or I can opt to combine. So here, first I will show you not combine. And then I say, okay. Right. So the challenge here is the same uh, chart ID, the name, all these have appeared. So now we are going to correct this. So I can go to options. I can say invoice defects. And I can say type of defects. And I can say count of defects. Right. So if you see here, friends, there are so many items that has very little contribution because of which the font, it, it's too big to see. So what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say anyway, I'm concerned about the top 80. So I'm going to say combine anything beyond 80, or I'm going to say combine anything beyond 90. So as your number of categorical nominal data is more and more, and you're not able to get a clear picture about your Pareto chart, you can use this combine option to combine items which are trivial. So the logic of Pareto itself is concentrate on vital few and you don't have to concentrate on trivial many. By concentrating on vital few, you will be able to control your outcome. So here by concentrating this first five items, I'll be able to reduce my defect count by 82.3%. So these items are not on in my focus. Hence, I can combine this and have a better view of my uh, chart. So this is the second option that we saw. The first option is having data, which is not summarized. And the second option is data, which is already summarized. Now we will see the third option in Pareto chart in many times. So here what I have done is I have taken the issue type for which customers are calling and raising a tech support ticket. I have also taken the brand of the computer. So is the brand of the computer having any impact or is there the same Pareto that is appearing for both the brands? That means the nature of issue has any control over the brand or it is independent of the brand, right? So let's try and understand that. So here, what I have taken, I have taken for the reason for people call and create tech support tickets. And when they call, I also make note of for what computer brand they are calling. So I, I have taken Dell and Hewlett Packard here. So I'm going to paste this data. Again, as I told, if you want to look at only charts, you can click here. If you want to, uh, so that will list down all the charts we have performed uh, up to now. And if you want to go back to this uh, data sheet, worksheet, we can come here. So just next to the issue type, I'm going to now paste my uh, brand, computer brand. So I'm going to click on stat. I'm going to click on quality tools. In quality tools, I click Pareto chart. This time, I'm going to take tech support. I'm going to leave the frequency column blank because I, I have not summarized the data, but I'm going to take brand of computer. So the moment I select brand of computer, I get three options. Default, all in one graph, same ordering of bar. One group per graph, same ordering of bar. One group per graph, independent ordering of bar. I'll explain all these three one by one for you. So just to make sure, so let me call it again as type of issues and in y axis i will say count here i will say text support issues say okay and for some time let me keep it in do not combine so the first option that i'm keeping is default all one graph same ordering of bar. So what is default all one graph, same ordering of bar, let's see. So if you see here, friends, what I have got is, 
I have got a Pareto. And in this Pareto, if you see this particular order, right, the blue followed by the maroon, then the yellow, then the green, then you get the you get the order, the dark yellow, the light blue, the light maroon. So this is the tech support issue order. But however, you see here, this is the Pareto chart for Dell computers, and this is for uh, HP. But if you see the order, the order is different. So it, for example, in Hewlett Packard, it's actually the keyboard issue, which is the topper. However, in the Hewlett Packard graph, the keyboard issue is coming at number two. Why? Overall keyboard issue is number two. So the order of these bars are as per the overall Pareto, but still we have two separate, uh, you know, Pareto charts then here, but the order is not, you know, uh, for each of this. So this might be sometimes a little bit confusing, but if you see this order, this order of operating system keyboard, uh, right? This order operating system keyboard internet issue. This order is as per the combined order. So if you take the Dell and Hewlett Packard out, this is the you don't uh, segregate into two graphs. If you want to put all these into one graph, the top contributor would have been operating system followed by keyboard not working followed by internet. So in the same order, the graph is getting displayed here, but it is not easy for us to understand. So what we can do, I think I have told in my previous videos also, if you press control E in mini tab, it will take you to the previous screen. That's the shortcut. So here, instead of saying default all one graph, same order of bar, I can say one group per graph, same ordering of bar. So now what will happen? The same Pareto chart will be now displayed as two separate graphs. Now, if you see here, this is for HP, but the order is still the same. And this is for Dell, the order is still the same. The, the Pareto chart is not properly arranged. So this is contributing 44, then 11, then 22. So the order is not same. It should have been 44, 22, 11, 11, 5.6. It should have been like this again, control E. So now I'm going to choose the third option, the final one, one group per graph, independent ordering of bar. So this really makes sense. Why? Now, if you see here, again, you will get two separate uh, Pareto charts. So let me get back to the graph. You will get two separate Pareto chart and you will see the Hewlett Packard chart is arranged as per the ordering of Hewlett Packard, keyboard issue, followed by hardware issue, then operating system. And if you see the same for Dell, it starts with operating system, internet issue, and then battery life flow. So if you want to use the third option, so again, let me click on control D. So when you draw Pareto, there are three options available. Just you have attribute data, keep the two columns blank. You get a single Pareto. You don't have to summarize data. If you have summarized data, you can fill the attribute name here, like how we have done for the invoice uh, defect type example. So you can put the defect type here, count here, and then you can draw a Pareto. If you want to do it by variable, then you can add the variable. You have three options. My choice always will be the last one because I wanted to analyze Hewlett Packard defects separately and I wanted to analyze Dell defects separately or Hewlett Packard related issues separately, Dell related issues separately. And I wanted to have individual Pareto for that. Then the third option makes sense. Again, this combine option, if there are so many categorical nominal data with which you are drawing Pareto, your font size, everything will look small. So beyond 90, if you're not going to really focus on that, you can then say combine beyond 90. If the number number of items are less, like in this case, we have only seven items or eight items, then what we can do is we will be able to uh, keep it, do not combine. So this is how you draw uh, different types of Pareto chart prints. I hope this, use, this video is useful for you. So we will meet again in uh, other videos on how we can make use of Minitab to do graphical and statistical analysis. Thanks for your time. Thank you.